Hello biology students and welcome to another video tutorial on how to do stuff in Excel. This video tutorial is going to focus on uh, how to log transform data, why we log transform data, how to subsequently plot log transform data, how to add a trend line, and how to get the trend line equation so you can put that equation in your figure caption. The focus of this tutorial is Lab 3, uh, specifically testing Yoda's Law, which is Do or do not! There is no try! Oh, sorry, that's a different Yoda's Law. We're going to be testing the Yoda's Law of uh, the mean biomass per plant declining with increasing plant density. So as there's more plants in a pot, each plant is smaller. So, I've got a data set here that, whoops, if my computer, there we go. I've got a data set here that is a compilation of several different sections data, so the numbers here won't match up with anything you'll be getting, but the general trends will be the same. So first, you might be wondering, well, why do we have to log transform these data? Uh, why can't we just plot mean plant mass versus plant density without having to log transform both those axes. And I'll show you why. If you do a scatter plot between density on the x-axis and mean plant weight on the y, you get this scatter plot. And as you can see, it, the data look kind of like a capital L. As you decline, as density increases from about 10 plants per pot to about 40 plants per pot, uh, the weight of each plant declines severely, and then from there, subsequent uh, declines in plant mass are still evident, but more gradually. And so it's easy enough to fit a trend line to this graph, What's difficult is analyzing it. Most of the statistical techniques that we have in biology or in science in general rely on certain assumptions. One of the assumptions for some of the tests that you're most familiar with, the correlation and uh, linear regression, is that the relationship between the two variables you're plotting is linear. In other words, what you're what it's trying to fit is a straight line equation. And as you can see, this is not a straight line. And so standard statistical methods would fail in trying to analyze these data. So that's why we use data transformations. Basically, data transformations, they punch the data into a straight line. That might sound kind of crude, and it actually is. Uh, it's the best way to go about fitting data to standard statistical methods, but I do want to let you know that there are some more sophisticated statistical methods out there that do not require data transformations. I'll show you one paper. These authors here in Australia, you can tell by the title of their, tape, their paper, they're not exactly fans of the arcsine data transformation, which is just one of the family of data transformations. You're using log transformations. Uh, and they point out that there are methods out there, specifically in this paper, logistic regression, that do not require uh, data transformations, and they're superior. I'm not going to talk any more about these, because I know, even though I like statistics, a lot of other people do not. I'll just point out that the methods we're using are of data transformation and subsequent analysis are methods used by the top scientists in the top journals. This is accurate information, but if we were to teach this course in, I don't know, 15 years or something, probably by then the more sophisticated methods will be more user-friendly and more understood by the average biologist, and we might be using some different methods. Okay. Delete. We're going. I'm going to show you how to log transform data now, and then how to plot it. So first, I'm just going to write some column headings. 
log density, log mean height. Oops. Log total weight. Log mean weight. There we go. So you take the log of something, like we're going to take the log of density here. You start by hitting the equal sign because we're going to be adding a function. And it's actually very simple to do. You just type log. And here's the five Excel formulae that start with log. The first one is the most uh, versatile. So it returns the logarithm of a number to whatever base you specify. But we're going to actually choose the second option, log 10, because we just want base 10. And so we don't have to type an extra value if we use this formula. There we go. What do we want to take the log of? This cell. Close parenthesis, enter. There we go. We've taken the log. Now I'm going to cursor over the bottom right of my selected cell and drag to the right. And this is going to copy the formula, the formula to these other cells. And so now, if you look at the formula bar up here, and I cursor right, you see that we're taking the log of cell C2, D2, E2, and F2, which is exactly what we want. So here's the raw data, and here are each of their log transformed values. Now we're going to copy that these formulae down. So once again, I hold with the left button the bottom right of my selection, and I drag it down and release, and there we go. We only had to type the formula once, and thereafter we could just copy it wherever else we wanted to go. So we have our log transformed values. These are the values you'll be using to do your correlation. And these are the values we'll be plotting. And that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to make a scatter plot. I won't show you how to do a correlation because it's just a standard correlation. You just happen to use these columns. All right, here's our scatter plot. Select data. I'm going to do something slightly different this time. Normally I've been showing you how to select the data range by clicking here and then selecting two columns that are right next to each other. In our case, the two columns that we want to graph are separated by a couple other columns in between. We're going to be having log density on the x-axis and log mean weight on the y. So one option would be to simply cut this column and insert it over here so that my two columns are right next to each other. But I'm going to show you another method so that if you run into this situation again, you don't need to uh, it saves you a good five seconds. So I just clicked Add there. I'm not going to give this series a name because we only have one data series. I select the X values. The X values are my log density values. Note, note, and now I'm going to select the Y. Notice that I'm not selecting the header row because there's no option in the box to select header row or not. So when there's no option, just select the data, and you just have to know for yourself what you selected. Looks good. Hit OK. Great. Now there's a couple of things you're going to notice right away with the graph that it spits out at you. One is our log transformation worked. Whereas before our data were in a capital L, now they're a nice linear relationship. The higher the y ax the y axis, the smaller the value on the x axis. This is nice. A couple outliers here, but that's just how she goes. The other thing you're going to notice is this thing. What the heck is the x axis doing way up there? Well, we can't really blame Excel on this one because it is being clever. It is putting the x axis at the zero mark of the y axis. So that's usually what we want, but not in the case where the data are below. That's just kind of weird looking, and it would be wrong. So I'm going to show you how to move this x-axis down to the bottom of the graph where it ought to be. To do that, we need to select the y-axis, right-click on there, and Format Axis. Within this Axis Options menu, down here at the bottom is what we're looking for where you can specify where the horizontal axis crosses the Y. So right now it's automatically choosing it at zero, and we're going to instead tell it, cross the X axis down here, negative 1.4. OK. 
Beautiful, it did it. It's good. Next thing I'm going to show you how to do is see all this blank space here between 0 and 1 on the x-axis? This is all blank. There's no data here. It's okay to have some blank for, you know, a quarter of your graph or something, but this is almost half your graph. We want to maximize the data region by putting as much data in there as possible. The data region is pretty precious, so we're going to format the x-axis, and I'm going to tell it when to start the x-axis values. Don't start at 0, start at 1. And if I start at 1 on this graph, I'm not chopping off any data. I close. Beautiful. Now we have less blank space, more space available to show data trends, and as a result, some of these partially overlapping data points uh, can be clearly distinguished now. And that's nice. Okay. I'm not going to show you how to do all the graph cleanup stuff of getting rid of color and adding axis labels and all that stuff. You know how to do that. But I will point out that make sure when you do add your axis labels, indicate for each of your two axes that we used log transformed data. That's important. Okay, now we're going to add a trend line, a linear trend line. To do that, you just right click on the data and add trend line. Oh, that couldn't be easier, eh? And it gives you a nice linear trend line and it pops up with these options saying what kind of trend line you want. And you can have all kinds of little dipsy doodly, wow, uh, trend lines. But we just want a linear one. Please just use a linear one. Uh, you can also change the color, change the thickness so that you want it to be at least thick enough that if you photocopy a graph on a not very good photocopier, it's still not going to disappear with the fading. Something else I'm going to show you how to do is checking this box. Display equation on the chart. Whenever you have a trend line in a scatter plot, you need to say what the trend line equation is. Excel automatically puts, when you check that box, autom it automatically puts the equation right on the chart itself. We don't want you to hand in a chart with the equation right on it. This is the data region, and the data region needs to be reserved for data only. It's precious space. So what we will do instead is we're going to copy this graph into Word, and then we're going to be copying the equation, putting that in the figure caption. So let's pretend we've done all of our graph cleanup. I hit Control C on my graph. I bring it into Word, Control V to paste and we're going to pretend that I got rid of the box around the graph too. Now I've typed my figure caption, figure one, blah, blah, lovely caption, and then I'll show you how to, I hit control C to copy, here's how to state your trend line equation. Trend line equation, colon, there we go, period at the end of the sentence. Uh, this isn't quite perfect yet. Two things need more need to be done. First, I need to delete that from the graph itself. And second, this is a generic y equals mx plus b formula right now, but we actually know what y and x are, so let's change this from y to log uh, mean plant weight in g, and x will change to log just have it like that, and there we go. That's how you log transform data, how you subsequently plot log transform data, why we log transform data, and how to put your equation into your figure caption, which is something you should do every time you have a trend line. So I hope you learned something about uh, life, the universe, and everything, and may the force be with you.